All right, guys, we're gonna start out this vlog with candles. Very exciting. So, huge candle kick lately. We've got, I showed you candles in my favorites, yeah? There's these candles. I have another video that I think they're candles. And there's another that I can foresee <laughs> there being more candles because we're on that kick. So, these were sent uh, by Skin Store. I was able to pick them out myself. So we're gonna do a little review for them and we will objectively review the quality of the candles and subjectively review the scent because obviously. So um, thank you to Skin Store because these are exciting. I have Nest candles here and I've never tried Nest candles. They're extremely popular. So the first one, we're gonna open these together because you know, exciting. So this is lemongrass and ginger. This is the eight ounce box we have here. And all right. It's very fresh. Like it smells like if it was on a cutting board, like, and I sell, I smell this scent often because my mom cooks with these two things often when she does Thai food. So yes, this is, very true, a uh, true scent. I'm excited for this. I always love these scents. I just don't like them in the winter. I like them, they just don't feel right when it's cold. They, it's something I want when it's like hot out and I also like burning them outside. Uh, this next one, this one is so far outside my comfort zone because I don't really like florals. Um, and this one has rose in it. It's the Rose Noir and Oud Candle and this is like a big, the big one. And I, Took a chance on it because it has noir in it. Whenever noir is in a candle title or whatever, I'm very interested. And then I like oud because it's like, it's just, it's like a, it's a very sultry scent. So, okay, let's do a look comparison. This is the eight ounce. This I think is like a 20, 21 ounce. So kind of a big difference, yeah? But this one looks so good. Okay, so rose noir and oud. Okay, rose is definitely there, but I don't hate it. I don't know what the noir part of it is. I do smell the oud. There's incense, black leather, and patchouli. Okay, I smell the incense and I definitely smell the leather. And I guess patchouli makes sense. This smells really expensive and luxe. Like if I were to walk into like a really nice hotel lobby or smells really good. I really like it. It's like both calming and kind of bougie. It's okay. I'm excited for this one. Okay. Next we have, it's from the brand called Neom, N-E-O-M. This is the real luxury scented candle. It has lavender, jasmine, and Brazilian rosewood. So again, we kind of went outside our comfort zone and tried something. Here's the thing with jasmine. I feel like whenever jasmine is part of any kind of like scent profile it tends to overtake the other scents and it always just oh well, yeah definitely and it always just feels very it's just jasmine <laughs> so i don't know what brazilian rosewood smells like but this is a very strong candle like not that the uh, the nest ones weren't very like present as far as the scent goes but i didn't feel like overwhelmed by it this one i feel a bit like i don't want to like put my nose all the way into it but floral like things can give me a headache this lavender is also very strong if you like lavender and jasmine this is full on your candle oh yeah i don't know if, if i burn this i don't know <laughs> we'll see we'll see if we burn this one or not okay this next one is from the brand comfort zone it's their tranquility candle and oh this one is also a little strong as well okay so I don't see the notes on here. I will look them up. Okay, so it looks like orange and cedar wood. Okay, maybe there's cedar wood in here. I don't smell orange or cedar wood at all. Okay, maybe cedar wood a little, okay. But no orange. This one, also a little strong for me, but like I could still burn this, I think. This doesn't like immediately make me feel like overwhelmed. It's a very calming scent. It feels like, I smell like coconut in here. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna, these two together, the lemongrass ginger and this one, 
just smells like Thailand on a beach with a picnic with Thai food. Yeah, these two together smell amazing. This one can kind of cut the whatever this is. It's not orange and cedar wood, but I like it. All right, as I burn them and like form opinions, I'll share them with you. Uh, I'll try to link other candles on the website that I'm interested in and or I think would be good. Uh, I do have a 25% off code, yes, so that will be linked below as well. I'm excited to burn these candles and let you know what I think and on with other vlog things. Okay, so we're going to start off with this nest one. It's Rose Noir and Oud. And the profile here, Rose de Mai and Smoky Oud are combined with hints of incense, black leather, and patchouli. So... This is typically a scent I would not be into purely because there's rose in it, but I took a chance here because I tend to like oud depending on what it's mixed with and it's saying it's a smoky fragrance really appealed to me. So I've had this candle burning for about half an hour. It is so good. The rose is not cloying. It is... It smells expensive. You get little wood notes here and there. I can smell the patchouli. I can smell the oud. The oud is quite subtle. I mean, at least for me, I would say I'm someone that has a fairly sensitive nose. I'm a one spray kind of girl when it comes to perfume. And this is so nice. It's filling the room without making me want to blow out the candle. You know what I mean? This is the scent in your hotel lobby, in like a lush hotel room, that kind of thing. I feel like there has to be elements of velvet somewhere. It's, it's warm and luxe. Okay, so even after burning this candle out, do you see how you're not losing a lot of the wax here? It's so efficient. <laughs> I guess that's the word. This is a very efficient candle. We like it. It's economical in that way. Okay, so next is another nest one. We have lemongrass and ginger. Okay, we've got vibrant lemongrass, aromatic ginger combined with eucalyptus, thyme, and sage. Let this go for a while and see what we think. Okay, so this one has also been burning for about half an hour now. You can see how clean the burn is. You're not losing any of that wax. This one straight out the box smells fresher, sharper. Once you burn it, you kind of get more of a, I don't know if the word flame is the right word, but it's a really good kitchen candle. I think if you're cooking, I think it's really good as an outdoor candle when the weather is like spring, summer. The lemongrass and ginger, I think, is what I smell the most, which would make sense. And then I smell the thyme a little bit. Eucalyptus, not so much, and not the sage as much either. I tend to like lemongrass, ginger, lemon uh, as like a general profile. So this one, again, not for the times right now, it's very cold, but I will bring this back out spring, summer. Okay, so this has been burning for at least 45 minutes and we're barely getting a dent. <laughs> so this is a candle that will burn for a long time. It claims, I think, 55 hours. And it is very fragrant. I had to like open a window a little bit. So if you are like, oh, I never smell my candles or a lot of people when I read reviews, people are like, oh, I don't smell anything. I'm never someone that smells a candle or burns a candle and doesn't smell it. Like I'm not one of those people. I must be more sensitive to scent. But this out of the box smells identical to when it is being burned. I feel like there's always a slight difference in unlit versus candles that have been burning for a while. With this one, what you get when you open the box is exactly what you get when you're burning it. And it smells really good. It's just a little full for me, like how do you, full bodied, very, I'm not sure what the word is. I have to crack the window a little bit. I don't like florals very much and this does lean floral even though the notes are orange and cedar wood. There's a lot of floral in here that I'm sensing and I can't seem to find the notes anywhere. I'll try to find them for you. 
Uh, but yeah, this is a high quality candle if these are your scents. Okay, so the Ness candles are the winners for me and I love both of these. Highly recommend the Rose Noir and Oud and I'm excited to try out other ones from Nest. So I just want to quickly talk about a high-end candle versus like an everyday, I don't know, candle, like a cheaper candle. Okay, so this is a candle I got from Aldi. We are not knocking Aldi. I love Aldi, but this is one of the candles that I bought there. It's from Huntington Home. It's the Lemon Macron. They don't even make this anymore, but the scent is so good, right? It's like fruity pebbles. Maybe they'll bring it back like next year or something. I burned this twice. <laughs> uh, and then at a certain point, I tried to kind of like scrape the edges to bring it to the center. This thing burned so quickly and there's so much like tunneling. Whereas with a more pricey candle, I'm not saying all pricey candles, these candles in particular, I think were really great. So I've burned this candle twice and this candle twice. And do you just see how there is going to be tunneling at some point, but it's not, it's not going to be like this. And this burning twice versus these burning twice, it's just so much more long lasting. So the function and utility is there, but also the longevity and the reason why you pay a little more. Anyway, I just wanted to share that as like a good comparison. I mean, I'm gonna continue to buy both kinds. I'm just letting you know if, if you are someone that's like, I just wanna buy a really nice candle, I want it to last long, uh, then I would recommend a pricier candle to you. Okay, so last video, I showed you guys those smart sweets, right? Like, let me get on this bandwagon of like trying to be healthier or whatever, but I should know better because then look what happened. Family size, Swedish fish, Twizzlers, gummies I haven't tried before. So moral of the story is don't do this. And I should know better because I've done this before. When I went vegetarian years ago, I would try out all the like imitation meats, like the chickens and the fish, etc. And they were like, okay, they really just kind of would make me want like actual meat. Um, they were also not good for me as far as like there's a lot of soy in them and my body doesn't do well with a lot of soy. I can have it, but not like every day. So <laughs> therein the lesson for me is don't try to find substitutes for things that you like because I don't know, I should just know better. Again, like I, I don't do well with restrictive things. It just makes me want things more. So I'm just saying, if you like the Smart Sweets, go for it. I thought they were fine, but they really, <laughs> the imitation just made me want the real thing and such is life. So update for you there. All the stuff, we have the extra toasty favorite. We have whatever this is, the, I don't know. I got it because it's had a dollar off. I'm just gonna use it to make my spring rolls, but I actually have to check my receipt if they gave me a dollar off or not. Two of those, we have pancetta parmesan kettle chips, two dozen eggs, lunch meat for sumo, parmesan, uh, mm, cheddar, they have chickpeas now. This is 3% salt. They also have barbecue, which was 12%. Two of the dark blend, Coca-Cola with coffee. They have Rana there. Is it Rana or Reina? mushroom and cheese, and wand almond milk. Okay, so I'm about to do a salted egg fried rice, and we've mashed up the salted egg. I have two here. We have leftover takeout rice, which is the best rice. And I have the rice completely like separated it, and I saw this trick on, I don't know if it was a YouTube video or like on Instagram, but they took a raw egg and they like, mixed it up with the rice before making fried rice. So I already did that and that's why it's kind of yellow. And then this salted egg paste I got from Yami Bai. I've been using this in fried rice and it's been really good. So uh, yeah, we're gonna make it. Okay, so I am never not going to do that trick. Look how beautiful this rice is. Like every single grain is beautiful and yellow and covered in egg. Oh my God. It's just 
just do it. Mix the raw egg with your grains of rice before doing a fried rice. Like, wow. Okay, so this is what we're starting with. If you like this, I'll link it. Um, it's by Safavi, Safavia, I don't know how to pronounce it, but it looks good like online, but in person, in person it actually also looks good, but I bought this having a different vision for a room and there is like nothing black in this house. So we're gonna cover it with this like butcher block contact paper, which I think looks really good. So I have to kind of unassemble all these panels and properly cover these, hopefully without any air bubbles. Okay, so this is the next morning. This took me about an hour and a half. Uh, I had to kind of mess with the contact paper a lot. You know when you kind of have to find your groove for how to place it so you don't get as many bubbles? I still have. You can see probably, hold on, there's bubbling there. There's actually a lot of bubbling in this area. And then as I kind of went through, I got better at it. But I had to also unscrew and unhinge each of these panels to pull out like the base part, not the base part, the panels. <laughs> and then cover those individually and measure everything. But I actually really like the way it turned out. I feel like I was looking online for a piece of furniture in this color. And you know how like when you're hyper-focused looking for something, you basically know everything that exists. <laughs> but when you read reviews, especially for, when things are black or white, I think it's easier. But when you are getting anything wood toned, it's lighter, it's darker, it's orange, it's, you know, it doesn't look good. Like this kind of furniture finish, I think is harder to purchase online. So I'm really glad because this is exactly the color I was looking for. And um, yes, super pleased.